Okay, here's another video on my 2010 KTM EXE Champions Edition. I have a problem here with my front forks. The last trip I went on, the uh, bike came back and puked out a bunch of oil on the trailer. So the plan here today is to try to get the fork oil back up to the same level on both forks and possibly inspect the seals and see if they need to be replaced. So I've got some parts here from Rocky Mountain ATV. Uh, five weight fork oil. I've got the tusk tool for taking the caps off the top of the forks. And I want to try out this uh, fork seal doctor. It's supposed to be able to um, get up in here underneath the wipers and get out any dirt and debris that may be in there. So I'll give that a go. I'm hopeful that it's just debris under the seals that let the oil out and not any actual permanent damage to the seals. And under that assumption, I want to try something different. I know the normal operation is just to take the entire fork uh, set off, but I want to see if I can take the caps off here and pull the springs out, and then with the springs out, actually lift the wheel up and uh, be able to see the depth of the oil uh, level on both sides that way. I'll have to take this, the uh, handlebars off, so it may not be any less work, but I want to give it a go. This fork seal doctor is actually designed to be able to work by sliding it in here without taking these fork covers off. So I'm gonna to try to do that on this side. First step is to pull down this little dust seal, this wiper here. So I've got a little seal pick that I'm gonna to use to try to separate that out. Just kind of pry it down gently. I'll tell you a little of the space, I'm gonna move around to a new spot. Apologize for the camera work here, it's a little bit difficult. So this wiper, Nice and oily. You can see there's some grease packed in there as well. So I'm just gonna move it out of the way and give a, just a quick wipe here. All right, so now the seal doctor snaps around the shock. And here, you just slide it upward. That didn't quite go, let me just push it upward. So I'm gonna try to go again here and just push it up there and see if I can get it in between the rod and the seal. And it feels like it's finally up in there now. So I'm gonna bring it all the way around couple times. The nice thing about this, like you can see, is it just fits in this little space um, where the, uh, the cover is and lets you get in without taking too much apart. So you can see mainly just grease, but you can see there's a little bit of gunk that was up in there. So I'll just keep on going around and see if I can pull any other junk out of there. Next, I turn my attention up to the top of the fork set, and you can see me here removing the handlebars and making way for access to the fork caps. I'll remove those using the special tool from Tusk with the four pins on it. And with the caps removed, I should be able to raise the suspension and have the springs come out the top of the fork tubes. With the springs removed, I should be able to access the fluid level inside. You can also see here that I had removed the front brake caliper. That turned out to not be necessary, but I'm zip tying everything up and out of the way. Off camera, I loosen the four bolts on the upper triple clamp that pinch around each of the fork tubes, and I also removed the front wheel. Now that turned out not to be necessary in hindsight. The reason I had removed the front wheel was that I was a little bit concerned I wouldn't be able to back out each of the fork caps individually with the wheel holding both of the fork shafts together. But that wasn't an issue. There's actually plenty of wiggle room. And if I had kept the wheel connected to both of them, I could have backed out the caps and then lifted the whole assembly up together. The next step is to remove the fork cap from the rest of those internal components. And you'll see I pulled the spring down to reveal a nut that's inside there. You'll need a thin wrench, but if you hold on to that nut, that will immobilize the internal shock shaft and all the other valving components and let you thread off the fork cap. Here I'm using a thin wrench to hold on to that nut. The near size that I had in the style wrench was a 7 8 inch, but I think the nut is properly a 22 millimeter. I'm just reusing the uh, Tusk cap adapter now again and turning those wrenches against each other. It's pretty easy to turn, but pretty awkward to hold on to, and you'll see I'm about to run into a problem here. As I'm backing out the top cap and then it suddenly stops, what I realized is that I had not turned down the preload adjusters before trying to remove the cap. So I must have been rotating the fork cap relative to the preload adjuster and not actually removing it like I thought I was. In any case, the fix is to change direction and thread the fork cap back down until it's snug. And then the center of the top cap can take a hex wrench 
and that's what we use to adjust the preload on the spring. So what I needed to do was turn it counterclockwise until it stopped and then go back to turning the top cap uh, counterclockwise versus the wrench that was holding on to the internal components. So far the fork cap has been what's limiting how far down the shock shaft can fall and as that cap is taken off now the shaft will be able to slide down further. It won't fall out of the tube but it'll come down to where its upper bushing is resting on the lower seal. If you lift that shock shaft back up that lifts the spring and then the spring can come right out of the tube. I reinstalled the front wheel to make it easy to compress the front suspension. I want the forks to both be compressed all the way to where they're bottomed out and then I'll look down the open tubes on the top to see where the oil level is. I've got a headlamp here that I'm going to shine down inside the tube and you can see the uh, shock oil down inside there. What I'm going to do is use this uh, steel rod that I've marked with uh, blue tape. That blue tape is at four inches or about 100 millimeters. And I'm just gonna go down while I'm watching until the tip of this touches the oil on the center line of the fork here and see where the rod lines up relative to the fork tube. And that'll tell me if one is lower than the other. So now I've taken measurements on both sides using this rod inserted into the fork tube. And using the center line relative to the triple clamp here, I find on the left side, when I touch oil, the top of the fork tube is right in the middle of this piece of tape. When I insert the rod in the same place on the right side, it touches oil with the top of the fork tube uh, being about a quarter inch above the top of the tape here. So I know that this right side is a bit lower. And I'm gonna try to set the fluid on the left side and the right side to be right at uh, my four inch or 100 millimeter mark. It's right in the middle of the range um, for what these can be set at. It's not perfect, but it's what I'm gonna do in my case. I've got one of these flexible funnels that I've stuffed down into the top of the shock tube so that it goes into the space between the rod and the fork body. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pour in fork oil a little bit at a time and then keep on taking measurements so that I can see what the fork oil depth is. I've got an equal level of fluid in both forks now. Critically, the one that was extra low has been filled back up and they're both equal at about 100 millimeters down to the fluid level. So now it's time to start putting things back together. And what I'll have to do is thread these fork caps back onto these rods, of course, after putting the spring in. But what's critical is that um, I turned these inner adjusters, these are the preload adjusters, I turned them all the way counterclockwise. And the reason for that is that if they start out, if they start out uh, clockwise, that is if these are turned in any, then uh, when I go to turn the overall cap onto those rods, what can happen is that the inner adjuster, uh, the preload adjuster just turns counterclockwise and doesn't actually thread. So by threading them fully counterclockwise, that means that when I turn the outside part onto the, uh, the shock rod, it will actually thread on. Once this cap is all the way down, on the top of the fork tube then um, and tight, then I can go ahead and uh, adjust these and turn them in to, uh, to put preload onto the spring. So I'm gonna start doing that now. Unfortunately, I lost track of the camera framing here, so you can't see exactly what I'm doing up top, but I just lifted up the internal shock shaft and slid the springs down over it and then threaded the fork caps onto the shock shaft and snug them down, just the opposite of removal. And here I'm lowering down the wheel on both forks at the same time, and the fork caps are resting on the tops of the fork tubes. There's actually a good amount of wiggle room there, so it wouldn't have been any problem to back out one of those at a time with the wheel attached to both forks. So in the end, the wheel actually doesn't need to come off to do this job. But I snug those down, and the rest of the steps are really just the reversal of the removal steps. So once I got everything put back together and torqued down, I took it outside and gave it a little bit of a ride and everything felt fine. After a bit more riding, I'll come back and retorque everything since I did touch the handlebars, the front wheel, and the upper fork clamp bolts, and I want all those to be secure. So hopefully this was helpful to anyone who's considering ways to replenish lost fork oil, and it could save you some time versus removing the forks entirely off the bike. I'll post links to the tools that I use for this in the description, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.